It's a year now. And we've done a lot of work together at Octane, uh, and, uh, and we've worked together on uh, internet applications, we've worked together on website stuff, but Chris is also a very accomplished presenter. He's good at communication, and he's good at conveying information in such a way that it engages the people that he's talking to. And, uh, you know, I was talking earlier on the way in here about some people you communicate with and you tend to start to pull back a little bit. But others that you communicate with, they pull you in. And, and that's really where Chris is, is particularly strong. So I'm really happy to introduce Chris Van Dusen who's going to talk about uh, the elevator. So thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much for that intro, Matt. That was very kind. Now I have to make sure I don't let anyone down. Um, so we're going to talk about the elevator pitch. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm Chris Van Dusen. I co-founded a company called Efficiency um, that helps small businesses tell their stories better um, by utilizing new technology. Right? How to show your story in the best manner. We wrapped it first around the iPad, but it's really any type of mobile technology. I'm also a director of Big Dev uh, for Reef Media here in Orange County. And uh, we work as an outsourced marketing firm for a lot of small media businesses. Um, and lastly, I speak and write about tech startups and mobile integration and emerging technologies. So today what we're going to talk about, if you haven't been able to, uh, to figure out, is the elevator pitch. And in, in my opinion, the elevator pitch is probably the most important thing you need either as an entrepreneur, as a financial planner, actually in anything you do, it it's really comes down to it's your value proposition. It's what you offer that no one else does. And see, what's interesting is we're now living in this world of 140 characters, social networking, Twitter. There's so much white noise out there. There's so much data that you can find. Well, where's your signal? Where's the thing that makes you different than anyone else? And that's what we're going to start to talk about. So, Let's, let's figure out exactly where we're going to start. And that's the traditional meaning of an elevator pitch. <coughs> where it came from, why, as we move forward, this isn't your grandfather's elevator pitch. Right? This isn't 60 seconds of me accosting you in an elevator. Right? So we're going to figure that out. But there is some, some parts of that that we want to extract and we want to kind of build on. Again, we're going to look at what not to do. I can't tell you how many networking events I cups of coffee I get at Starbucks where I meet someone and I just say, what do you do? And to be honest with the horrible responses I get. It seems like such an easy question. What do you do? What makes you different? And a lot of people struggle to answer that. And so hopefully we're going to be able to figure out some different constructs. We're going to be able to figure out some different ways to put that value proposition, that pain statement, and figure it out. So that's where, what it is and how to construct. So we're going to look at I think it's three different examples of how to construct a good, succinct pitch. And then we're going to look at real life examples, because quite frankly, I could sit here for the next three hours and talk to you guys about how to construct it. But if you haven't seen examples, you can't put it in and extract really how to do this, then it's all for naught, right? So let's go into the brain of our guy. And let's look at what Wikipedia says is the tra traditional elevator pitch. Right, so, an overview of a new business idea that an entrepreneur can explain to an investor the length of a chance ride shared by the two parties. Pretty easy, right? But let's be honest. This never happens. <laughs> God! Like, I've been in sales for 11 years. Tell me the last time, well, actually, let me say this. I'll tell you the last time I've had an elevator ride with someone, my CEO I wanted to get in with, or my core demographic, and it's pretty much never, right? Show of hands, anyone actually had an elevator ride where you went, Oh, there he is. <laughs> right, let, me, let me do it. One. One? Okay. Well, let's talk, because I want to find out what elevator you're riding. <laughs> we have the same clients, so I'm going there. Let's go. This never happens. Okay? What is it? It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for what do I do if I have 10 seconds, 60 seconds, right, um, uh, two minutes with my ideal client, my ideal demographic. Again, the CEO I want to get in with. Okay? And everyone loves metaphors. I love that picture, sorry. <laughs> right. Really what it comes down to is it's your value proposition. As I said earlier, what do I offer that's different from everyone else? What is it that, what's my special sauce, right? I don't know if you guys have heard that term. What's, what makes me different? And that's where we want to focus on, okay? 
And I put in here that everyone needs a value proposition because I look around this room and I see that there are a lot of people that are younger than I am. I'm not that old. Um, anyway, but that are younger than I am. And so for the most majority of your lives, you've been able to say when someone says, what do you do? I'm a student. All right? I'm a student. And that's like your easy out. But what you're actually saying is, I'm a student, that's what defines me now. And usually they invoke, you invoke a question of, well, what are you majoring in? What school do you go to? What do you do? Right? So that's important because that's really what we're trying to do here with our value proposition and with what we're trying to do to catch their attention. I'm a student. It invokes the question of, well, where do you go? What are you majoring in? Right? Same way. I'm a financial planner. I do this. Well, what do you do with it? So we're going to start talking to them. So use the fact that you're a student and think about that. And we're going to go on. Now, I put these two headlines on because as we said, I'm a student, right? That's your headline. Just like these are kitschy and fun, Badgeville did not earn a badge checking in at Twist Up 8 or foodme.com. I'm hungry and want a deal now. But, well, I want to read that now. What are you talking about? Right? Explain it to me, Patty. I'm invoking a question. Right? So you want to have your personal value statement, your personal uh, value proposition as something that's a headline and catches their interest. So as we move forward, remember that. Remember the headline. <coughs> something that grabs them by the lapels and doesn't let go. So we're now standing in front of our ideal client. How do we make them not say zoinks, right? <laughs> zoinks, scoop. Like, I'm running away. I'm falling asleep. I don't want How do we do that? Well, let's first figure out what not to do. And so I put this little graph in here, micro macro. And I used the financial services statement earlier. I used to sell both debt and equity funds. I used to be in the financial realm. And I'd go to these networking events and I would say, hey, Joe, what do you do? And he would say, I'm in financial services. Well, what does that mean? Right? There's layers. You're a financial planner. Are you an advanced tax planner? Do you wholesale debt and equity funds like I did? What do you do? Tell me. But where the inverse of this comes is don't be limited. So don't say, I only sell stocks. Right? Because if I was trying to buy life insurance, I don't know. So not too macro, not too micro. Somewhere right in the middle. Tell them your industry, tell them what you do, tell them what you offer that may be different, but don't give a, a broad overview and don't go too micro. Also, don't make crowded pitches. So I go to a lot of startup pitch events where new startups, tech startups will come up and they'll be in this platform of 10 minutes. They'll have seven minutes to give their pitch, three minutes of Q&A. And they work with these different angel investors or VCs to really hone in on their pitch. So they have seven minutes. And the way these angel investors or these, these advisors talk to them is they said, you have seven minutes to tell them everything about your company. Well, wait a second. I've been working on this tech, this tech project or this, this, new, this new company for the last two years. Six months, two years, whatever. I have so much I want to share. So they just put every single thing. And what you end up hearing is that they talk faster than anyone can understand. I'm a hyper person by nature. I talk fast. I have to slow myself down so that I can be understood. But still, you go up to these pitches, and, like, I have da -da -da -da, and they end up sounding like this. Come on, YouTube. <laughs> oh, give me a break. <laughs> All right, well, what it was was the Micro Machine Guy. Does anyone know what Micro Machine Micro Machine Man is sending the most efficient, innocent motorcade of Micro Machines. Each one has dramatic details, perfect turns, tremendous time, and precision paint jobs, working wheels, Micro Machine cars, vast variety, including leverage. Does everyone remember the Micro Machine Guy? Does anyone? All right. Eating myself. Oh. All right, so we don't want to do credit pitches. We don't want to throw every single thing in there, but we also don't want to go on and on. Be able to reach your audience. Be able to look them in the eye and understand body language and whether or not they're interested in what you have to say. We'll talk about that later, but you know, Facebook doesn't have every single person in the world that has an internet connection. They would like them, but it's okay that they don't. They're still doing okay, right? They're still making some money. If someone's not interested after you giving them your value proposition, then that's okay. Learn to walk away. Don't waste more time, because time's a precious commodity. And if you go on and on, you will put them to sleep. So I have some, I've, I've been to these events again where I ask, what do you do? And they say, well, I do this. And they compel me, right? I'm ready to whip out my business card. I don't have the opportunity because they won't shut up. They just keep talking. <laughs> be quiet. Get them. Start the conversation. Invoke a response for me and be able to walk away. You don't need to give them every point. 
So let's take a look here. To get them excited, get the light bulb to go off in their head. To get them excited about what's, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Reef, she made an appearance. That is uh, the president of Reef Media's point. She'll be excited that she made an appearance. But sorry about that. Now we have everyone's attention, right? They, I have your attention now, right? Anyway, so we have everyone. They're they're excited, right? How do we get them there? Well, the first thing is your first impression. <coughs> it doesn't matter what you look like necessarily, but it's how you're perceived. I love this. First impression goes everything you figure out later minus the later, right? It's, it's the minute you say something, what they perceive you to be, no matter what else comes out of your mouth. Because if you look like that, all right? That's, if that's anyone in this room, I'm sorry I pulled that off of Google. Um, your elevator pitch closes deals before they ever get started, good or bad. Right? So if you come at them in a sleazy way, if you just barrage them with, for lack of a better term, diarrhea of the mouth, right? You're just killing them with info. They'll do this, like Matt said, they're pulling away from you, they don't want to listen. So, little Twitter bird, and we talked a little bit at the beginning about, about social networks and 140 characters. And it really is the world we live in. We live in this world of short attention spans and people that want information immediately and move on. Right? So as we think about Twitter, we think about these headlines. If anyone uses Twitter, anyone in the room use Twitter? <laughs> All right, there's some people. For me, I look at Twitter a lot. But for me, I don't read everything that I see. But if a headline catches my eye, I'll dig in deeper. So your value proposition almost needs to be the same way. You need to be able to get their interest and make them want to click on that headline. Click on that blog link if you write. Click on that article if you write. Read more about you, want to know more. Okay, so really, your elevator pitch from the beginning, it's like real life tweeting. You have 10 seconds to get their interest enough to want to know more. And so I put an example here. Here's a construction example. Overview the pain point in your company's value proposition. Right? Simply constructed, we're helping people do X by offering a service that does Y. Okay, nice and easy, succinct, one sentence. And a great example I found doing research was I make software for hospitals that gets patients in and out faster, okay? Pain point, we know why he created this, right? It's horrible to go to the hospital. You go to the ER, you're there for hours. But we don't want to know more, so he's invoking questions. And these questions are the questions that we want, okay? Who, what, and where they know the why. They know why this is an issue, as I said. They want to know, wait a minute, can I use this at the DMV? I use this to lie at Starbucks in the morning. Like, what, what can I use this software for? What, what else? What are the other applications? Tell me more. Tell me more. We don't want them to question why you created this. Right? It's like me saying I'm going to create a uh, Chris book. Right? And everyone say, why? There's already a Facebook. We don't want infrastructure questions. We want engaged questions. Okay? So another interesting thing is as we're getting these right questions, we can then customize this pitch towards our audience. And see, this is important. I mentioned before, if you start to lose your audience, if they're not interested, that's OK. But we can make it more about them so we can have a better chance of retaining them as possible clients or just get it, letting us get through what we're talking about. And so eBay does a great job of this. Okay? You know some people have blank problem? Well, I have a blank solution. And as you can see, eBay, you know, seeing people have stuff they want to get rid of but don't want to get it all away for free. Well, I have a website that allows them to auction anything off to the highest bidder. Pain point, I don't want to have a garage sale. I don't want to lose money on this. I just got a new TV, right? Solution, we offer a website that gives it to the bidder. That's easy, simple, to the point. You're now asking questions. And when you want to customize it to your audience, if you're standing in that chance elevator ride or at a coffee shop and you see it's a, a new mother, right? You can answer all of those baby supplies. You could auction those off. Right? You can start customizing and talking to your audience and, yes, making some generalizations, but really it's just being able to engage them and make custom presentations. And we'll talk about an example of this later well, when I show you, excuse me, a startup that has multiple different elevator pitches that they use. 
Founders Institute. Now this is very tech related, and that's my background, and that's where I come from, or tech startups. So all this is done for a tech startup, if you look at the verbiage, but we can kind of extract some things for a roadmap. And please don't worry about pulling this off. This presentation will be available to anyone that wants it. Um, whether or not you think I did a good job, the, the data will be there if you want it. But my company, status, right? Name, status, then my product category, whatever I'm doing, the target group that my target demographic, the use case, right? What, what I'm trying to do, I'm locating keys, finding a date, increased sales. And then what's my special sauce? What makes me different? What makes me unique? And that's <coughs> as important as anything else out there, okay? For me, I take all three and meld them together. I hope Mark Zuckerberg would have been if he worked harder. <laughs> right? Not as successful. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> let me laugh. It catches you. Regardless if you think it's funny or not, I caught you for a second and made you stop and think. I grabbed you by the lapels. And now is my opportunity while you're sitting there a little stunned to tell you actually what it is that I do. Because your first impression of me now is that was clever. That was interesting. Right? And so for me, I use the wow factor. And then I go in and say, problem to solve, right? Like the pain statement, what it is that I'm trying to do to fix it, and how do, do I solve it, right? How does my company physically or myself do something different? But for me, I do, I look at structurally four things. First, no matter if it's one sentence, 30 seconds, two minutes, be succinct, get to the point, deliver only the information that's important. And I'll get to what that information is, but really, Deliver only the information that is important. Easy to understand, your grandma or your grandkids. Cross-generational, someone should understand what it is you're talking about. I don't care if you're making new computer chips, or you have the, the coolest, hottest, most, uh, the best internet startup, they should understand what this is about. They don't need to know every moving part, but they should understand what it is about. Green inducing, I was gonna leave this out, but Greed inducing doesn't necessarily mean money, okay? But think about this. When someone says, Chris, what do you do? They're asking you, what can you do for me? They do not care what you do. <laughs> they care about what you can physically do for them. Right? We don't go to these networking events because we just like meeting people. Like, there's a purpose behind these. And so when you're constructing your elevator pitch, when you're constructing your value proposition, make sure you're answering the question, what can I do for you? What is it that's my, that's, that separates me from everyone else? What is it that I can do differently for you, my audience? And again, I've said this before, make it irrefutable. Invoke questions, but the right type of questions. We want them to ask how they can apply it, right? That, what can I do for you, not why the hell are you doing that, okay? So we're gonna look at some examples now real quick. Has anyone heard of man paps? Two people. Oh! <laughs> this. Vanpax is a new startup that came out. Andrew Draper is the CEO, he's a friend of mine. And so I asked Andrew a question. I said, if someone asks you, Andrew, what do you do? How do you answer? And there's Andrew right there. I will help myself. What do you do? He usually, his first reaction is, we sell underwear on the internet. For me, I'm clicking on that. That's funny, right? That's a great headline. We sell on the internet. But really what they do is they make it easier for men to ensure that they have the basics covered in stock while freeing up time to do other more important things. Okay? You're starting to understand a little bit more about what they do? This is where you start asking questions and it goes in and says, Man Packs is a start and stop, change at any time, subscription service. For the man's morning ritual, providing easy access to items such as underwear, shirts, socks, shaving cups. The pain point, we don't have time. This is perfect for me. I don't have time to go buy underwear, socks, t-shirts, shaving cream, all the necessities of life. So you're telling me I can sign up for a service and every three months it gets dropped at my door? That's a killer. I love it, right? But he gets you by saying I sell underwear on the internet. And then you ask more questions. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get them interested and to ask more questions. And that's, it's not a complex idea, but try and do that in one sentence. That's where you start getting to do ask questions and to keep going through. Another startup we're gonna look at is speaker text. Speaker text is great, I love Matt Morellis, the CEO. 
Well, when you go to their site, it's video SEO on steroids. What? What does that mean? I'm interested though, tell me more. And so we go in, I mean, I see video SEO on steroids, I think of Mark McGuire shaped as a monitor walking around with a bat, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is, I wanna know more. Now, already he's got your attention, but when you look like this, right? That's Matt, when you look like this, you don't need much more attention, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you wanna invoke questions. So I called Matt and I said, Matt, someone asked you what do you do, how do you respond? His answer to me was, who's my audience? I said, wow, that's cool. Who's my audience? All right, um, just someone you want to sign up with speaker text. He goes, okay, well this is how I answer. Video transcription company that helps SEO videos create captions and interact with transcriptions all in easy to use platform. His special sauce, easy to use platform. Right? The problem is SEO and videos and his solution is by creating captions and transcriptions that will interact with Google. Okay? And so then I asked him, well, what do you say if it's a VC or an industry expert or an analyst? He said, we're a transcription service in the cloud powered by a hybrid AI and crowdsource model. I said, why do you make such a diversion from the initial? And he said, well, your audience will determine what they want to know. S speaker text, a client of speaker text doesn't necessarily care how it's done. They care what they're getting out of it. Remember what I said before? It's not what you do, it's what you can do for me. They don't care about the process. They care about what happens at the end. Okay, what they're getting, how they're benefiting. And so, for a VC now, who wants to put money in this, which is, by the way, still a customer. Any of you are budding entrepreneurs? You have a bifurcated business model of people to entertain. You have clients or customers that you want to sign up for speaker text. But you also have investors that you want to part with their hard-earned money to go into your company. So it's, they're both customers, they're both clients, but how you entertain and how you attract them are two different ways. A VC wants to know, how is, what's the process? Is it scalable? How does it work? So tell me that. And then he said, and then I can go on either direction and explain the mixed report, which is where transcription service to help your videos get discovered by search engines using AI and crowdsourcing, okay? So that's a combination of both. We start at one place, and then we bring it back together in the mix. And by the way, if any of you, little pitch because I like Matt, but if any of you do have video on your website, this is a great service right now when you have a video there, like the one that's being recorded here of me talking. It might say Chris, Chris Van Dusen, right? UCI, Cal IT2 for tags. But all of my words that I'm speaking here right now are lost to Google. No one can find them. So unless you've tagged it properly on the video, you can't find anything that I'm saying. Speaker text allows all of this, what I'm saying, regardless if you want to hear it again or not, to actually be recorded. You can find it and they can search it. So it's an interesting little service for increasing your SEO on your website. Pay hey, Divi. Now, I put Pay hey, Divi in here. Mike Melody, the CEO, is here in Newport Beach. Mike is also a friend of mine, but Mike solves a fundamental problem and one that's very appropriate here being in a college, and that's the roommate situation and social pay, okay? And so I asked Mike, same questions. PayDivi is the first social bill pay platform, uh, pay platform, excuse me. PayDivi provides a smarter way to manage bills by allowing you to pay, send, and share bills simply and socially via web or mobile. His special sauce, it's social, it's web or mobile. The problem he's solving is that in his mind when he was in college, he had three roommates. All three roommates had different bills, power, water, cable, rent. And he said he was the one trying to keep track of it and he lost three grand at the end of his you know, three year stint with these guys. PayDivi allows social sharing, so it solves a problem. The problem, three, four roommates, all having different bills. Right? His solution is making it a shared bill play, pay platform. Different than we pay, but we can go into that later. And his special sauce is that it can be available web, mobile, anywhere. And lastly, I included Evernote. Does everyone know what Evernote is? <coughs> Ooh, shake's fist again. <laughs> Evernote is fantastic. And I'll let Phil, the CEO, tell you why. Hi, I'm Phil Lippin, the CEO of Evernote. Evernote is your external brain. Whenever anything important happens, you put it into Evernote, you always have it on hand when you need it. You can use Evernote with lots of devices that you currently have. You have a word. So the most important thing I want to focus you on is two sentences, right? Two sentences. 
He said his whole company, probably one of the most complex platforms, in two sentences. He went on for another 40 seconds and told you a little bit more of the process. But the only thing that he needed to tell you were those two things. It's the external brain. It's the thing that I don't need to keep all this information in my head. I can now hold it, record it, and keep it somewhere else offline. But let me rephrase that. Online, because it's actually a cloud service. The idea is it can be separated from myself. He's creating, excuse me, the problem is we have so much information. The solution is that it can go anywhere, and you can keep it offline. So now I went ahead of myself, so let's, let's take a step back. Then don't be boring. Don't be boring. Please don't be boring. <laughs> Give me something. Okay? When you come up and I say, what is your elevator pitch? What is it that you do? You tell me I'm in financial services, I'm going to turn around and walk away. If you give me a brain dump, I'm going to fall asleep. Okay? Catch me, get me, talk to me. Identify a problem. That's a big problem. Okay? Identify what the problem is. Identify your audience, identify the problem. Provide a solution. But provide the solution depending on who it is. If you can't see that in the back, it's a big shovel. Okay? Right? Tractor. Anyway, um, provide a solution. I don't care that there's a huge ogre that has to carry that thing around and dig you out. I care that you're going to get me out. Okay? What it can do for me. So we now have their brain. We now have their. We now have them excited. Okay? What is our goal here? What is our goal from all this? Well, first our goal should be to get to a meeting. This is our chance to give a longer presentation. This is our chance to actually do something, okay? This is our chance to bring in the executive summary, to give a five minute pitch, to give a 20 minute pitch, half an hour if they let you. They're excited about you now. They know who you are, you've caught their attention, they understand your idea. Now is the time to give them the micro machine comment, but the micro machine comment in 30 minutes, not 30 seconds. You can speak normally, you can talk through it. By the way, overhead projector, how awesome is that? I do new technology and that's the picture I brought. It's awesome. Okay? Another interesting thing that a lot of people forget, and I go to these networking events, and they give me a pitch, or they, they talk to me, and I get excited, and then they walk away. Or they hand me their business card, and they take off. I'm like, well, what, what, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're putting the onus on me now that I've got to respond to you? Get my card. Some of the most successful bloggers or internet companies have started by developing internet uh, email databases. Groupon, for example. Andrew Mason started that with just a list of his friends in Chicago and started running deals, which were spread, which were spread, and he got more emails and more emails. Each one of these people that you talk to, grab a card. All your CRMs or client databases have keys and functions to be able to separate out right, different um, if they're key influencers or if they're potential customers or if they're VCs, right? We can separate that out. We want to get cards. We want to create our database. We want to create our whole thing. And all this is for one big reason, right? Client acquisition. Okay? Client acquisition. That's what we are doing this for. If no one, no one wanted to hear us talk, Right? Or excuse me, if we didn't talk to anyone, we'd never get that. We'd never be able to steal one client each incremental time. Our goal is to formulate something so that they're interested, so they allow us to tell you, tell us, excuse me, tell them more about what we're doing. Now, I realize I'm supposed to stand up here for the next 20 minutes and talk, but just like an elevator pitch, and just like I told you before that I want to catch you with a headline, this is my headline. Now let's talk. Let's figure out, let's create a conversation around this topic, and let's figure out how to, how to customize this between all of us. All right, does that sound good? Okay. So my value, what I do is I say, I help small businesses tell their stories better. So do we have any brave volunteers who want to tell me what they do, and we can actually walk through and see how we can fix it, we'll make it a group activity? All right. Uh, I think we would just hit me. It's a perfect idea, but you want me to talk here or over there? No, you just, just stand up and say what you do. Okay, uh, what we do is uh, we offer uh, a solution to, uh, to take a, a 
software that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the beginning, I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> um, we offer, uh, computers used to have a single processor in them, and uh, now everybody moved to multi-core. Software is a big problem to work with a multi-core nowadays. In order to utilize it, they have to be paralyzed. Paralyzed is a very, very tough task. We, have, we are offering a solution that uh, enables programmers to uh, quickly take their code, put it in multi-core without all the complexities involved, and utilize it very well. Okay, so how do we make that in two sentences? <laughs> how do we do it? Because we should be able to, right? We should be able to find the pain point, right, which he said, which was, it makes it d difficult right now, right? Yeah, very, very, difficult to very difficult to develop pilot programs. Very difficult to develop pilot programs. Pilot, pilot. Parallel. Yeah. Parallel programs. Parallel programs are utilize multi-core machines. Multi-core machines. Okay. So does everyone understand what that means? No. Okay. So can I use an example of like, let's say, running Windows, running Mac, uh, running the OS on. Uh, on a Mac machine, can we talk about that? Would that be a little bit of it? I'm trying to make it a little bit easier. Like, so yeah. we need to think this out. We need to, to be able to figure out what the simplest common denominator is so that we can make this relevant to everyone. Because no, no, no disrespect, but we sat here and you talked for I don't know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, half the room doesn't understand. So how do we make that succinct and understandable by everyone, right? That's right. The problem is to make understand the concept of one core. What is this? So there's a history behind it. How can we bring this history mm -hmm. into, into somebody that never heard about it before? Exactly. So let's let's ask some of some people in here if you want to get involved. Yeah? Alright? Yeah. Most people can understand the distinction between hardware and software. You know, the hardware is Perfect. the actual machine that you buy, and the software mm -hmm. is the program that you load on. Uh -huh. You can say that, you know, now a lot of new hardware, new computers, they have multiple processors, so they can process a lot of information all at the same time. But the problem is, most of the programs written in the world can only take advantage of one processor. So they don't get the advantage, the benefit of all the additional hardware. And so his and company so this, allows... This company allows pro programs written for one processor to run as a multiple. Yeah. To run on multiple. So they, so, run so they run faster, right? Yeah. So do you see this? So we just took that idea and now we made it, we just made it very easy. What was your name? I'm sorry. Jamie Chen. Jamie Chen. And yours was? Zi. So we just took this idea and by talking out loud and by figuring it out, we just made it so everyone can understand, right? This distinction between hardware and software, multiple processors, okay? Which I know are big words, but multiple processors and how they can't run, but his software makes it so that they can. Okay? That's his special software. He, he does something that makes it easy to do. Okay? Another key word you said, you said quick and solution. Beautiful. So I would say something like quick solutions for multi-processor software. Beautiful, right? So we add that, we add a little bit of what Jimmy said, we meld it together, and we can get out of here in two sentences like that. Now, is, are they going to understand, understand every moving part? Absolutely not. Do they need to? Absolutely not. They need to understand enough so that they ask more of the right questions, okay? So I mentioned Twitter, and I mentioned Facebook, and I mentioned these social networks, and the difference and why they became so big was the fact that it invoked a conversation. And so typical advertising, typical marketing is one way. I stand on my soapbox. I put a billboard up. I speak at you. Well, so is the traditional elevator pitch. Social media is a conversation. It's a two-way dialogue about a topic. If you can get their imagination, catch the imagination, get their attention, and then start a conversation around it, okay, where you can then go into more of the interesting, more of your special sauce, more of what makes you different, you they're now not threatened. As Matt said, they're not running away like this. If they're starting a conversation around, now you're just talking. There's no more pitching. They're not afraid. They're not on their heels anymore, okay? Does anyone else want to go? Sure. Well, you make your faster, easier program. That's great. That's perfect. I like it. And they say, okay, how do you do that? And then you can tell them about quad pro, you know, quad core pro. Yeah. But you got their attention. And I want to know because, you know, my computer's slow, your computer, they want to know more. That's great. What was your name? Greg. Greg? Thank you.
Does anyone else want to say what they do? And we can go through it again. This is, is there, anyone enjoying this? No? Yes? Okay, great. Carlos. Where am I going? To Carlos. Car Carlos. Good <laughs> <laughs> idea. Okay. I have difficult to understand the processor. Okay. But here, what, which processor is better? Why this one is better than the other? Why Intel is better for AMD uh, processor? Mm -hmm. Computer, I, I don't have idea. When I have to choose a computer, which one I have to find? Okay. For me, uh, no one can explain for me that the way that I can, a I, 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 normal user can understand. Mm -hmm. Difficult to choose. Oh, so uh, how to explain which computer to get? Is that what you're asking? How to how to succinctly under explain what the, 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 the real why difference? Should, why we should buy? Why why, 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 why I, I should buy? buy. Why this is this is better than this kind of processor? Because because of when of a, a memory hard disk, it's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, the amount of it. I can mm -hmm. realize it in here. But when I say why why this processor is better than this? Why you need uh, I4, I5, I3. Well, so I don't think that's what I don't think that's what he's getting at. So I think what he's saying is we offer a solution, right, that invokes these four different processors and how to run software, right, intermingling. So it, it, it's not that one processor is better than the other. Yeah. It's that we're offering software that kind of makes all four of them work, right? I mean, so it, it's not that the uh, four is better than the five or that this is better or, or anything. It's that if you have this, we create software that allows it to be used through the whole variety, right? Where's the hand over there? No. For a new? Yeah, new. We'll try a new one. All right. Um, I, let's see how I can say I help small businesses elevate their sustainability profile. Great. Perfect. Does anyone else have anything they want to say? Because I'm going to ask questions now. Right? My first question is, what does that mean? <laughs> Not why are you doing it, right? But I'm going to say, what does that mean? Right, so now, so now, what would you say? I would say that a lot of businesses are interested in the idea of being more engaged in their community, mm -hmm. having a better environmental impact, but aren't sure how to do it, mm -hmm. and who will care about it. So I can help businesses set that up. Okay. And tell the world about it. Perfect. Does anyone have anything they want to say? Does everyone understand what that means? You said it in two sentences, three sentences maybe. Maybe I missed a period. All right, so done, easy. I asked a question, she was able to go. She got me asking a question of what does that mean? Not why are you doing it, right? And she didn't go on and on about this large topic. Because it's a that's a big and very wide topic. That very I mean you could probably stand up here and talk for the rest of the time I have about this topic <laughs> and still not get close to finishing it. Sure. I'm not sure it addressed it addressed my greed, however. As a small business person, Maybe I feel a little guilt about this, but what does it buy me? What, what's the benefit? Uh, cost efficiency. And um, proven consumer preferences towards social responsibility. So you assist with the marketing, not only the cleaning up the carpet. Well, both, um, yes. Assist with showing businesses that are interested in reducing their environmental impacts cost-effective ways of doing that, showing them how much they'll save? So let's do a cost-effective in there, right? Let's make sure we hit that. Absolutely right, what was your name, sir? Jay. Jay, that's perfect. So let's add cost-effective in there, because that's now, right, that's the special sauce. That's, that invokes the greed, okay. and that, that gets them saying, what can you do for me, right? So we add the cost-effective in there. We add what it's gonna do for them on top of what exactly that problem is that you're solving, right? You're still in the one to two sentence range. You still grab them. How? How comes after? We don't care about how. Remember, that's the process. So we're talking about clients. So you want to give them what they want, right? What? And yes, you want to know process, right? Right now, right? But you've asked the question to find out the process. If they just came out with you with every moving part, you'd run away, wouldn't you? I know I would. I think it's a great idea, but I would run away. That maybe that's just me. So is it, We'll take a transition. Does anyone have any questions directly for me that you need to answer? Yeah, you uh -oh. had a, a good a little saying there about uh, catch me, identify me with me or something. What was that? Catch me, uh, you that? It <laughs> says catch me, get me, talk to me. Oh, that's it. Okay. Catch me, get me, talk to me. Bobby, 
be honest, I had looked that, but let's let's figure out what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really good. Catch me. You got to get their attention first. Yeah. And uh, get me. You know that's kind mm -hmm. of the hook. You know. And uh, what was it? Oh. And then talk to me. Okay. So I think what I meant by that. Let's, let's figure out what I was going on my mind. So catch me. Catch my attention. Get me engaged. Right. So really, just get me. So I'm not on my heels. Like, get me. Get me where we need to go. Once you, once you uh, catch me, once you get me, right? Then tell me those the pain, pro like the pain uh, statement, and what your value proposition is, and then from there, we're going to start a conversation about it around it, okay? And that's really what we want, and that's what I want you to focus on is the conversation, the conversation around your topic, because the minute it goes two way and it's a dialogue, it becomes a lot less threatening for everyone. And that's why social media has worked so well from a, a customer retention standpoint, from a customer acquisition point, because people don't feel like they're being sold. And traditional elevator pitches are very much a sell. I'm coming at you, I'm gonna cost you in an elevator at a coffee shop, and I'm gonna tell you 60 seconds of me. I don't like 60 seconds of me, right? Why would you want 60 seconds of me? And so that's really, we want to create a conversation. We want those invoking questions that you guys have asked to the other people, and thank you very much for being involved, but that, said, that told what, what they do. We want these conversations, we want these questions around it. Now, another thing I'll, I'll just throw out before I take another question is, make sure you practice. So, Matt Morales up there had three different ones that he worked on, <coughs> and I talk to a lot of different startups, and I say, have a couple different ones. So when you go to a pitch event, and you're just talking in the lobby, you're just talking to people, you can almost A-B test a few different ones, okay? You can say, this is the one I feel comfortable with, these are different ones, and see what they respond to. See what you know a group will respond to, good or bad, on the alternatives. Okay, and be, from there you'll be able to kind of put together the best type of, of elevator pitch uh, for your audience. Yes, Kai. How do you suggest that we practice this? Do we sit down and do a brainstorm? Do we do it in a group? Do we go out just cold into a networking event? Mm -hmm. What would you suggest? So. Again, this presentation will be available, but you saw the Founders Institute, that walkthrough. So you're going to break down everything that's you into these couple sentences and just say that what the most important thing is. Then try and figure out how to add a little bit of special sauce, as I say, a little bit of something different to that and have a few varieties. And then, yeah, go to a coffee shop and just introduce yourself to someone. Because inevitably, what do you do is, hi, how are you, right? People say, what do you do all the time? And so. What we really want to do is just ask people, meet people, talk to people. And so the, the interesting thing is, you're never going to feel comfortable introducing yourself or talking to people if you don't do it a lot. And if you're at a coffee shop, and you're coming out of college, or you're new at your profession, they're not necessarily going to remember you. You haven't missed your shot with the big CEO in an elevator. Just introduce yourself. Grab a cup of coffee. You know what? Buy someone a cup of coffee and just say, what do you do? And listen to their response. And hopefully, Pick it apart and know that you're going to give them something different. Right? Grab their card, practice that, do it over and over. And from there, you'll be able to then feel confident when you do and you're, you are working, go up and say, how are you doing? I'm Chris. Right? Here's why I'm different. You'll have that practice behind you. Anybody else? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.